Hello, I have a cat on my lap. This video is not fear-mongering. However, if you are sensitive to the global reset conversation, you have the opportunity to click out of this video at any time. Fellow Oregonians, Californians, natives and non-natives, west coast to east coast, northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere. In regards to the recent events of Hurricane Helene, warmongering governments, profiteering military industrial complexes, greedy and power hungry politicians, money hungry corporations and industries, it is undeniable that we are living in turbulent times and they are not expected to get better. We've all seen what happens during propaganda scares, flu season lockdowns, unforeseen underestimated weather disasters, the dams that held back the floodwaters of truth are leveling the structures of ignorance that our society built to hold just long enough to make a buck. This video is here to remind you that all life is valuable and worthy of living. We are a capable species and each one of us is capable of making a positive difference in this world regardless of our own limitations. This video is a reminder to all of you to consider your options and look ahead to the future so that you may have the best advantage of growth, success and abundance for you and your loved ones. Fall has only just begun in the Northern Hemisphere, but consider starting early on your winter task list. Being prepared on an individual level, on a family level, and a community level to foster resilience and convenience. Disasters can happen anywhere, but I don't want to encourage people to stay where they are if their areas are not a safe place during these turbulent earth times. How about we have a fun weekend where we consider our location, where we are, and the history of natural disasters that have occurred in our location. Let's consider our distance from fault lines, volcanoes, and large bodies of water. Let's consider how close we are to dam infrastructures from large cities, nuclear power plants, and polluting factories, and yes, even gas stations. Consider the pros and cons of all of that. Let's look up our elevation and ecoregion, the climate, global and local, that is expected weather patterns over time for future clarity. Let's consider where we get our water from, the buildings around us, our community, our neighbors. The more we are educated about our location, the more prepared we will be in case a disaster hits home or close to home. Do you feel safe where you are? If no, let's think about how we can fix that. I didn't feel safe in Los Angeles, California because there's way too many people, there's not enough water and other resources to go around, it's just not sustainable. The weather is not as ideal as it used to be, it's really expensive to live there. So I moved to a rural area in Oregon to an agrarian community with like-minded hippies, environmentalists, and unsustainable loggers, but hey, there's room for improvements everywhere. The message that I want you to receive is that the planet is changing. And certain places that were ideal places of living are now danger zones. But states are not going to tell you to move, they'd lose money and power. You have to consider your individual circumstance. The sooner you get to a place, mind, body, or spirit, that makes you feel safer, the happier you'll be. Some people don't have the option to move because they're because a lot of times people have financial ties to an area or cultural or heritage or family ties to an area, but it's really hard to pick up the pieces of your life after surviving a natural disaster. What I'm saying is to the people who can, plan ahead while you have the opportunity. Maybe you already feel safe in your neighborhood or town and you just need to do some personal prep. Consider starting off with food and water preps for three months, picking your favorite foods and snacks, staple goods that store well and long. Don't forget those dried fruits and nuts that got electrolytes. You gotta get on that sprouting and microgreen setup. It's really easy. You don't need soil. You can learn to do it over the weekend and then you can just start introducing those habits into your weekly regime. Teach your kids how to do it. It's really fun and easy and it boosts your nutrition. In the off chance that you can't get food or you don't have access to foods, this is a really cheap option that you can have in the best of times and the worst of times. And you don't need soil to do this. And there are a lot of options. Check them out on the internet. I suggest looking into growing sunflower sprouts. They provide excellent nutrition for both vegans and non-vegans. And bluntly put, are you even a prepper if you haven't discovered the benefits of sprouting in microgreens? I mean, we are in a global reset. Don't forget your sanitary items, wipes, alcohol, sanitizer, dental hygiene items, medical items, first aid kit, tweezers, tinctures, medicine. Let there be light. 
If power goes out, do you have flashlights? Do you have a power bank for your phone, lanterns, candles, lighters, batteries? Don't keep those inside the flashlights, they will corrode. I live that rural life, so I have a lot of this stuff close at hand because I use it a lot more than you'd think. What about a to-go bag or a bug out bag in case you need to evacuate? I have one specifically because the area that I live in is prone to fires and I have a kitty cat and I always want to be ready to leave in case there's an emergency. So I have all of my cat stuff all ready to go. I have snacks for myself, weather related clothing, and I actually keep a sleeping bag and rain gear in my car at all times. That's also because sometimes I just go out and want to camp in the woods somewhere. Speaking about pets, maybe you want to have another month's worth of food stocked up for them. I always have an extra bag of dry food for my cat and some canned food as well. Going back to power outages, which I experience a lot where I live, I always have on hand puzzles, books, notebooks, and of course, a way to make hot chocolate. Okay, so say that you have your preps in case of emergency, what's next? Well, the future is next. Consider growing your own food and forming better relationships with your neighbors, sharing what you learn and grow. Never let your gas tank or phone battery drop below 50%. Discuss emergency plans with your family. Be there for your neighbors and community during the best of times and the worst of times. It's important to work together because more hands make less work and when everyone is on the same page, everything seems to be more convenient and flow more naturally. The little things that we do to achieve personal and community resilience, the more abundance we have to share, the more adaptable we are to change. So please consider making a couple changes before the end of this year to build a strong, more resilient life for you, your family, and your community because there is no reason why we can't all survive this global reset apocalypse 5D transition together. I really wanna highlight this message the most because I don't wanna see any more devastation. If you have the means, please prepare for this upcoming winter. A lot of places around the world and the United States are experiencing natural disasters, rolling blackouts, food shortages, water shortages. Please be prepared. You can be that helpful neighbor for someone in need or just prevent yourself from being in need when shit hits the fan. Don't wait for something shitty to happen in your state, in your city, in your neighborhood. Now is the time to motivate yourself to take little steps to being a little bit more prepared. If you have the opportunity, you should take it. A little here, a little there. You don't need to go hardcore prepper and bunker down. Just look at your situation and improve it a little at a time. There's my little sweetness. There's my love. There's my love. My sweetie pie. Brrr. Into my sweetie pie. I love you. How you get so fluffy? How you get so fluffy? You love me? I love you too. <laughs> I know you've heard this all before, but some people don't have clean food and water in the world. And even in the United States right now, some people can't sleep because they don't have a home or a safe space to fall asleep. There are some animals that are in need of help. They don't have food or water. So prepare what you can and give thanks for what you have. Okay, so another point that I want to make is do not put all the responsibility of your life into the hands of God or government. We have to do these things ourselves. It is our responsibility to take action. I encourage people to take responsibility for themselves and rely on their communities. You can still have your religions, but it is important that we all put in the work ourselves. If you have the means to help support people affected by Hurricane Helene, I encourage you to do so. If not, please prioritize yourselves and your family. Stay positive, do activities that you enjoy, spend time with your loved ones and your community, spend time in nature, grow your own food, live long and prosper. Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh. Hey, fluffy girl. Hello, fluffy girl.